Nothing like starting a film with a roar. In this case, the roar emanates from Honda's amazing 247cc six-cylinder machine from the 1960s, written by Jim Redman, etc., and now owned by Team Obsolete. This is due to be written by Steve Plater on a parade around the island a little bit later. Okay, so steady throttle for a while and then flip it. So, stand by for three minutes of noise. We now go up to the grid to watch the start of the Classic Racer Parade Lap, which will be waved off by John McGuinness. And then we shall see Steve Plater disappear down the Glen Crutchery Road, hopefully, on his parade lap on the Honda. It won't be possible for me to identify the riders as they leave the start line as it's all rather haphazard and the list in the programme is uh, in no way capable of being connected to those that we see. Just sit back and enjoy the noise.
there's John McGuinness walking up to perform his starter's duties a little later on. He's still suffering from the effects of his accident in Northern Ireland. And of course, we all wish him well in his recovery process.
and finally, and hopefully, both the sight and the sound of Steve Plater aboard the six-cylinder Honda that we heard in Park Ferme a short while ago. <laughs> disappears into the distance back to Park Ferme and there we see Michael Dunlop's bike number three and behind that is the bike of Gary Johnson both of these are Suzuki's bike number 98 is the Triumph of Andy Lee which will be last off the line Suzuki, Paul Kukati, uh, John Barr, uh, number 26, and Michael Otto, number 4. Number 28 is the Kawasaki of Matthew Rees, Cowan Racing, and behind them are the two Greenall Racing Kawasaki's of Horst Sager and Derek Shields. The bike of Andrew Dudgeon on the left, number 19, and bike number 47 belongs to Noel Torres Martinez. And there's Dean Harrison, number 9, giving his bike the last once over. Josh Brooks in the Norton Leathers is having a chat too. Now we move across to the starting grid. Rider number one there, waiting to move forward to his starting position, is Dave Johnson of the Team York Suzuki. John McGuinness and his son moving forward to their starting position. Yeah, attention start line, attention start line, just repeat 
provide early message. We'll be displaying lack of adhesion at the Highlander with um, green flags displayed at the Creeper Castle. Uh, we've also got down patches at, um, uh, just before Lower Bank at Theory, uh, the Lower Bank itself and the Black Dub. On the exit of Ginger Hall, the entry to and exit of the hairpin, the look and cover the zip. Thank you. Control out. Johnson moves forward to the starting position, ready to be given the off by the starter. Tap on the shoulder and he's away. Number two, of course, is Bruce Anstey. Thank you. 
Turkey, just in time to catch Andrew Dudgeon, number 19, is Kawasaki. Number 20 is Daniel Hegarty's Suzuki. Matthew Rees, number 28, is Kawasaki Mountain. Russell, very low number, and 
Ortiz followed by number 65, on his Honda. And bike number 58 is Ian Gardner's Kawasaki. This is number 57, Mark Herbertson's Red Kawasaki. Number 74 is Alec Whitwell on his Suzuki Funky Monk Racing. He's away to his monastery somewhere down Bray Hill. And this is number 83, Peter Murray on his Kawasaki. This is Colin Croft on his Suzuki number 78. And this, I think, is number 76, David Rozelle on his Yamaha. Stroke. Smoke clears, we'll see number 96, Jason Lamb on his Kawasaki. Very recognisable bike, number 77, Anthony Redmond's Honda. This is Paul Wilson's Kawasaki, number 79. Number 92 is Peter Creer's Suzuki. Michael Dunlop, number three, retires. And that's Paul Owen, number 59, on his Yamaha. And he's followed by number 65, Wayne Axon, on his Honda. Such are the lap speeds. We now see Bruce Anstey arriving at the end of his second lap and he's in second place. And for a new lap record of 126.995 miles an hour, shortly to be broken. And this is Dave Johnson in fourth position after a lap of 123.14 miles an hour. And this is Dean Harrison on his Kawasaki, number nine, the 
leader of the race. And another lap record, 127.212 miles an hour. He's followed by number eight, Horst Sager, who's also mounted on a Kawasaki. Thick and fast now, Gary Johnson, number seven, on his Suzuki. Another green machine. Number six, William Dunlop, in ninth position, lap speed 122.002. And the screaming rear tyre of Michael Rutter on his Ducati as he enters the pit lane. Number, number four. That's, um, no, we won't because you're not across the line. That's, um, is that not Rutter? Yeah. Is that Rutter? Mm. Next in view is Josh Brooks on his Norton and immediately behind him is number 12, Ivan Linton, on yet another Kawasaki. And turning into his pit is Connor Cummings, number 10. Connor is running in 10th position. The warning signal sounds for the arrival of Dan Neen, number 14, on his Kawasaki. Dan is in 11th position at the end of lap 2. in close order again, Derek Shields, number 18, on his Greenhall Kawasaki, and Danny Webb, number 17, on his Team Classic Suzuki. Next in line is 14th place man, number 19, Andrew Dudgeon, on yet another Kawasaki. The 16th position is occupied by Dan Hegarty on a Suzuki. Number 20. 15th position is occupied by number 36, privateer Dan Stewart on his Kawasaki. A moment's calm is broken by the arrival of number 28, Matt Reeves. Matt is running in 18th position. Two further Kawasaki's now, number 43, Scott Wilson, and number 71, Dean Osborne, in 19th and 24th positions respectively. Waiting the arrival now of number 27, Ben Ray, on his Suzuki, he's in 20th position. Behind him, in close order, are Ben Wiley, number 46, on a Bimoto machine, the first of those that we've seen, and number 25, Timothée Mono, on a Yamaha. And behind that pair of riders is number 47, Raul Thomas Martins on a Suzuki. And Kawasaki mounted Josh Daly, number 55, is next. A closer view of number 47, the gentleman with the unpronounceable name, Raul Thomas Martinez, number 47. That was number 87, Daniel Ingham on a Suzuki. And this is number 33, Kieran Hankin on a Honda. Quite a traffic jam. Number 34, Dennis Booth on a Suzuki. Two very close together, number 50, Andy Lovett, followed by number 69, Dominic Herbertson.
just caught Mark Parrott's Kawasaki and also Kawasaki mounted Morgan Gauvignon number 68. And this is the Kawasaki of Michael Russell number 24. Another pair of Kawasaki's now, written by number 61, James Caswell, and number 53, Peter Boast. I spent some time in Peter Boast's pit, chatting to one of his crew. And still they come, long-time campaigner David Madsen Mictel, number 32, on his Honda, and James Ford, number 60, on his Kawasaki. crew looking rather anxious as they wait for number 32 David Madsen Mignall to leave his pit but not before we see number 64 Neil Champion arrive on his Kawasaki David gets away and number 67 Forrest Dunn on his Suzuki arrives. <laughs> this is bike number 57, Mark Herbertson, on his Kawasaki. And the yellow bike following is number 66, an old favourite, Alan Bud Jackson on his Yamaha. I'll have to be quick, number 74, Alec Whitwell on his Suzuki, 83, Pete Murray on his Kawasaki, and lastly, number 58, Ian Gardner, also on a Kawasaki. Arms are raised at his entrance, Number 78, Colin Croft on his Suzuki. Number 76, David Frizzell on a Yamaha. And finally, number 77, Anthony Redmond on a Honda. Next to arrive, number 91, Bob Farrington on his Suzuki, and number 90, Mike Carter on a Honda. As number 90, Mike Carter pulls into the nearby pit, 92, Peter Creer on his Suzuki comes through. As does 94, Andrew Cowie on his Suzuki. This is number 75, Andy McPherson on Suzuki, and he's followed rapidly by number 80, Darren Creer on Kawasaki. Next, we see number 85, Alan Thomas on his Suzuki. The distinctive leathers of the late David Jeffries are worn by number 73, Ross Orchard, on his Kawasaki as a tribute. The triumph of rider number 98, Andy Lee, concludes our film of the pit lane arrivals and we will now hurry down to the winner's enclosure.
which is a bit of a scrum. Where we see the governor there in his white trousers waiting to greet the runners and riders. This is a time trial, of course, and so the first person we see is number two, an early starter, Bruce Amstey, on his Paget's Yamaha. Mr. Paget, the team owner, inspects the rear tyre of Bruce's bike for future reference. And the crowd now turn to greet the race winner, Dean Harrison, on his Kawasaki, sponsored by Silicon Engineering. And Dean Harrison talks to the TT Manx radio reporter about his experiences. A still image removes the scrum and there we have the winner, Dean Harrison. And there we have our first view of the third placed man, Horst Saker from Liechtenstein, riding a Kawasaki in the colours of Greenhall Racing. Well done, Horst. A moment's calm for Bruce Anstey as well. Go! Perfect! 
Guys. <laughs> And now to the main grandstand for the garlanding ceremony and the presentation of the trophy. We conclude this little film of the Superbike race with some still images of those who triumphed on this occasion. But everyone who takes part contributes in a spectacular way. And we have a lovely picture of Horst and his young lady. Also Dan Stewart, the leading privateer, rider number 36. Bruce Anstey, Dean Harrison, and last but not least, the trophy, which they all sought, but only one could win. Until the next time. <laughs>